With so many different types of sparkling wine out on our shelves and on our wine list, it can be intimidating knowing where to start. I like to shop by method. Knowing the method or the way in which the sparkle got there, how the bubbles were formed, can help you have a better understanding of what you can expect in the glass as far as the texture and the aromatic personality of a wine. In this video, we are going to discuss three common methods that you will find at Daedalus. The traditional method, the Charmat method, which is also referred to as the Tink method, and ancestral method, which is also called Petnap. Okay, the traditional method. Now the traditional method is most famous in Champagne where it is called Methode Champenoise. Now to make a traditional method sparkling wine, the wine needs to go through two fermentations. So the first fermentation is a simple alcoholic fermentation and we're left with base wine. Then the winemaker will move the base wine into a bottle, very much like this and they will add what is called liqueur de tirage. So they will add a little bit of yeast, a little bit of sugar, and then they cap it. They'll cap it with either a crown cap or a cork. And as we know with basic fermentation, as soon as the yeast and the sugar find each other, a second fermentation happens. And this will happen in these really beautiful cellars. And the wine will rest there from anywhere from several months to several years. And in that time period, what is actually happening is usually within the first couple of weeks, you have that secondary alcoholic fermentation is completing. But then once the yeast has turned all of that sugar into alcohol, it starts to break down. It dies. And we call it lees. So the bottles will be in a cellar aging surly for a period of, of time. And in that time, as that lees is breaking down, which is called autolysis, you are developing a really frothy texture like cappuccino foam, and you are gaining aromas like bread dough, croissant, cake batter. It's kind of what makes champagne smell a bit like a bakery. Once the winemaker has decided it has spent enough time on lees aging in this way, whether matching their house style or matching requirements for their specific appellation, the bottle will, will come upstairs. Now, the yeast has been resting in the bottle. So if we've been resting like this in the cellar for some time, the, the lees has been resting here at the bottom of the bottle. Well, as you know, when you buy sparkling wine, most of the time the lees is still not in there, so they have to get it out. And they do it through a process of disgorgement. Now, this can be a process that will take several weeks to months. So what they'll do in the most traditional sense is they will put the bottle, keep it on its side, and put it in a rack with holes, resting the neck in like so. And then every so often they'll do a quarter turn. And as they're turning the bottle, the bottle is starting to go from a horizontal to a vertical position. And over this time, all of that lees that was once resting will now come into the neck of the bottle. Great. So the, we've got a concentration of yeast right here, but we still have to get it out. So what a winemaker will do is they will submerge the neck of a bottle in a solution that is very cold, essentially to freeze the yeast within the neck. And then they do the actual disgorgement, where a very, very skilled person will hold the bottle like so and release whatever the cap was, whether it was that crown cap or the cork, and shooting out will come the block of lease. So during that time as it was resting, it has obtained probably six to seven atmospheres of pressure. That's like the pressure in an 18-wheeler tire. That's a lot of energy in the bottle. So this lees comes shooting out. They cap it with their finger and they bring it up. Now the next part with traditional method wines that comes next is what's called the liquor de expedition. So this means that they are going to top the wine off with a little bit of wine that has been lost and also maybe add a little bit of sugar. Uh, which was referred to as the dosage. So they will top it off and then depending on how they want the wine to present texturally, like if they want it to be really fluffy, if they want the acidity to be very, very balanced, they might add some sugar up to what is referred to as like a brute level. If they love the zestiness, if they love the punchiness, they like the more scrubbing bubble textures, um, they might only top off with wine and no sugar. And that's what we call brute nature. So these wines are 
aromatic. As I said before, they're super frothy. If you were to take a sip of a traditional method wine and swish it around, you get like chipmunk cheeks. It just explodes like this mousse and texture just becomes so fluffy. And because of that extended lees aging and that additional pressure in the bottle, your bubbles will actually last longer than some other methods. So you will have a very fine bubble, which is referred to as a bead, that will continuously be rising to the surface of your glass, but will stay lively. So I'm not afraid to put a traditional method sparkling wine in a white wine glass like this. I actually do not prefer a flute because I want to be able to enjoy all of those amazing aromas and complexities that have evolved all the time of that with through that cellar aging and is creating a really complex decadent wine. So don't be afraid, swirl your traditional methods and enjoy the beautiful bouquet. Okay, the Charmant method, also known as the take method. A lot like the traditional method, this method sees two fermentations. But instead of the secondary fermentation happening in bottle, it will happen in a tank. So the winemaker will produce a base wine and put it into a tank add a little bit more yeast and sugar to excite that secondary fermentation. And as that secondary fermentation is taking place, CO2 is being released, energy is building up, and there's a lot of pressure in the tank. When the wine uh, is complete, it'll be filtered and drawn off out of the tank, and we are left with a really playful sparkling wine. I find that Charmat method sparkling wines have some of the same flavor characteristics of a traditional method um, because of some lees contact that is happening in the tank, but they tend to be a little bit more um, fruity because the aging is happening in a, in a larger container and for a shorter period of time than what you might find in a traditional method cellar, let's say. Charmat method um, is really popular in Italy and it is how Prosecco is made and how most Lambrusco is made. So because of this method, Prosecco will deliver a little bit of a fatter, more poppy bubble than something made in the traditional method. So when it comes to glassware, um, if you do love your flutes, um, I would think that something from the Charmat method would actually be a little bit more playful and a little bit more fun in a flute, simply because these wines can be a little bit more aromatic. You can really get some of the fruit character um, from the grapes that are used to make this wine. So having it in a tall flute will allow those kind of strong aromatics to come up to your nose and it's playful and poppy and fun. In the beloved Method Ancestral or the Ancestral Method, Pet Nat, Petion Naturel, Pet Nats are so popular and are really fun. Uh, and they are unique in this lineup because they only feature one fermentation. So to make a Pet Nat, a producer will harvest grapes and they will most likely crush or press those grapes. The yeast that exists on the grape skin will come in contact with the grape juice and alcohol um, is developed. Now, what most winemakers will do uh, to make a pet nat is they might start that fermentation in another vessel like a tank, and then they will cool that fermentation down before it's completed so the yeast gets cold and a little sleepy and stops turning the sugar into alcohol. And what they'll do is they'll move that stalled fermentation into a bottle, cap it, and then let the fermentation complete in bottle. So you're getting all of the energy from that initial and really only primary fermentation. Pet nuts are so fun. Um, they have a really fat bubble. It's almost like pop rocks in your mouth, like really playful. Um, however, because the pressure in a pet nap bottle is only maybe two to four atmospheres of pressure, um, you are left with bubbles that can feel lively at first, but will dissipate in the glass. So if you leave your, if you leave your glass out with pet nap, um, it will fall flat significantly faster than like a traditional method sparkling wine. So I tend to like to drink uh, my pet nuts really cold. Pet nuts are made all over the world. Um, certainly recently we've been really excited to represent them from the US as well as Europe. And pet nuts can really have a range of style. Uh, sometimes with a pet nat it can be almost cider-like and a little funky. Others might feel a little bit more fresh and floral and fruity. So it really comes down to knowing your producer. 
The other thing you might notice in Pet Nat would be the lees. The lees might still be in the bottle. So remember with the traditional method and even with the Charmat method, the lees is left behind and we are presented with a wine that has been filtered essentially. But when it comes to a Pet Nat, you can still have some of that lees and some sediment in the bottle and that is completely natural. And that is partially because that fermentation is finishing in the bottle. The yeast is still alive when it gets into the bottle. It's still going through fermentation. Once the fermentation is complete in bottle, it will fall to the bottom of the bottle. So this is when you can see um, some really, really interesting sediment at the bottle. And there's a bit of a debate with producers as to whether or not you should pour the wine gently off of the lees so that the, the shoulder of the bottle will actually kept it while others encourage you to gently shake the bottle back and forth and enjoy it all together.